Okay, so we're using the curve snap tube, and we're going to go ahead and build this collar. Actually, bring that back and take my move tool, and I'm just going to make some adjustments to it. Figure out the best way to turn this up as a collar. Um, there we go. Just move it into position to make this a little bit easier for me. And we'll fix, I'll show you how I fixed little things like that. And there may be a better way, and that's okay. Um, I just, at this point, it doesn't really matter so much for me. So as long as I can get the end result, um, that works. And you'll probably come up with a different way. Because everything that we're talking about, there's, I can show you the exact same thing with just using mask. So um, there's no right and wrong. It's just whatever way works best for your workflow. And especially when you're talking about for illustration. Um, now, when it comes to games, it's a little different because with games, your poly counts matter, um, your meshes matter, all that stuff comes into play. So let's, here we go. Design-wise, I just want to make sure that it's going to work based on the reference that I'm using. Still have the mirror symmetry on. There we go. All right. It's that 80s hip hop collar. Um, it's a little more extreme, uh, my version, but that's okay. All right. So once I get here, take a step back. Let's look at it. It's a little bit high, but we can make some adjustments to it and fix it. I don't want her looking like. Um, I just want it. I don't want it to look like something from a Klingon or anything like that. It's not science fiction. I'm going to delete that curve, and now that mesh is in place. So I'm going to simply knock my mask off and hit group split. You can also hit group split without knocking the mask off. So now I'm going to deal with the topology. So our active points are 148. Um, let's see what happens if I just, all right, when I just drug the mouse, um, hold control down and created a mask, my topology is too thin. So I get this crappy hole filled thing. So what we're going to do is undo and I'm going to divide a couple times, one, two. So we'll have to clean that up later. And I'm going to use the inflate. Uh, instead of using a brush, I'm going to go down here to my deformation. And I'm just going to go inflate. That'll give me more thickness, which gives me a little more room to uh, use my DynaMesh. So I'm going to divide again. And resolution, I'm going to take it up to 200, actually 300. Let's see what happens when I do it this time. All right, so we have a much nicer mesh, no holes, good. So now I'm gonna clip this mess off. I don't need that anymore. That's just a little something extra. Whoa, almost crashed. Let me do a quick save. All right, that way, if we crash, we won't lose where we are. And let's go ahead and clip this off here. Just do a close hole. There we go. Okay. Do we hit and close hole? There we go. And then just smooth it out. Perfect. Okay. So I just hold shift down, smooth it out. And now I'm going to drag everything into place. We had a nice start for our collar. Smooth that out again. And I want to keep the resolution for the resolution fairly um, low. So it makes it easier for us to sculpt. So 65 points, that's absolutely nothing. That's not a problem to sculpt with. It's very easy. All right. So now we have the collar. And the collar is a little high. So I'm going to make a quick adjustment. Just go to my move tool and take my symmetry off and just hold it and move it straight down. There we go. And then I'll make the adjustments in the front. Undo, undo. Which is a symmetry. Here we go. There we go. Now I'm losing um, the ridge here, so I want to make sure I keep that um, as a part of my design. You, you know, maybe maybe later on I'll come in and say, oh, I don't need that so much, but I think right now I'm going to keep it, and I have to go in and clean that up by adjusting it a uh, little bit. Here we go. All right. 
so you can see how those snap tools, um, the curved snap and the inflate brush and the curved tube snap, those are just really good tools for helping us with our meshes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my clay brush. And I'm going to start adding a little bit of um, wrinkles to this. Actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and add the bottom, and then we'll add pockets, and then we'll come back to that. So um, let's make an adjustment to this topology. Select. Move this here so you can see. All right. I'm going to select that jacket. make it a little bit longer and then I'll come back and grab those two and pull them down I kind of I like the, I like the short um, back give it a little flare a little more design all right so I'm just going smooth the edges here and let's smooth the edges on the inside too there we go all right and so now I want to create um, the collar at the bottom I don't know what the technical term is for that but I think you guys get the idea. So I'm going to switch back to my curve tool, start from the back, and just swing it around. There we go. And let's see. All right, that's good enough for what we need to do. I'm going to zoom back and let's delete that curve. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually I'll start to move it and shape it here right while we're here just to get an idea um, of what I want to do once I separate okay that's good that's good positioning so I'm gonna go uh, group split again and now it has its own separate layer I'm gonna turn this guy back on so that I can see um, while I work um, exactly where it should be and just start to there we go there we go, start to move this guy a little bit into position. And I can divide it. Whoa. Control D, get a few more active points so when I smooth it, it won't all fall apart. Now let's use our DynaMesh again. There we go, that's good. And now I can just sculpt it and put it in position. And so at this point, it's really just a matter of getting it to look um, the way you want it to look. It's just push and pull. Not a lot of work there. So I'm going to pause and just flatten this out uh, that way. Um, I don't waste the time doing that. Okay, so we're at a good place. I'm going to take the polish brush and just kind of, uh, let's do this. I'm going to divide it again so it holds its form. 214 you should do. And just polish the sky a little bit to get it nice and flat so it's not so bubbled. And pull those edges out again. There we go. And because it's cloth, I don't have to. I don't want it to be perfect. I don't want it to be uh, perfectly symmetrical. In this case, I just need to keep um, some sort of order with it. Let's pull this guy off a little bit because the jacket wouldn't stick to her body per se. All right. All right. So we're good here. And so. <clears throat> I could always go and sharpen it more or make those little adjustments. All right, so let's go here. So I step back, I can see I want it to be a little bit longer. And then I'll grab my polish brush again. And if that's B, you hit uh, P for polish and you'll see your polish brush right there. If you load up other brushes, you'll see more. All right, just kind of smooth that out. I do, there we go. There we go, okay. So once I'm here, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and break out the alpha we talked about earlier. And so it's already set up and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy over here on the left so we can see it. And I'm going to zoom in and switch to my standard brush and use that as alpha. I'm going to turn all of that off and just switch back to my drag rectangle. There we go, that's too intense. So I'm gonna turn my Z intensity down for my brush. That's a little better. Let's turn around, all right. So I'm gonna divide this again so it'll hold more of the detail. And it's pretty high, but we'll drop it down again. Uh, there we go, that's pretty good, all right. So zoom in some, here we go. Let's 
rotate around. And you can, I can overlap. It won't. That's a small detail that will actually give me more uh, texture. So turn everything else off. Actually, let's turn that. There we go. Okay. Um, and then we can turn this jacket back on. Let's see how it looks. It's pretty good. That'll work for now. Oh, I could once again go in and clean that up, but I don't have to because we're using this for illustration. So I'm going to go ahead and do the sleeves next. First, I'm going to mask it off, cut it off. Hit Alt to switch. There we go. And right there on the edge. Clean up the front just a little bit. All right, that's good. I'm going to hit Control I to inverse, and we're going to go ahead and um, let's drag this guy again. Zoom in. And I want to give a little bit more of a raise. So I want to bring my intensity up some. Let's see. Mm, that'll work. All right. Undo. Now we have to go in and smooth it out. So we just want to give the illusion of some type of frills here. There we go. And let's see, let me back up a little bit. That's too much. I'm going to turn my um, smooth down. So I hold shift and I want to take my Z intensity down to about 14. There we go. And just briefly roll over it to break it up. It'll give me those folds and they won't be so intense. There we go. That'll work just fine. And then uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. And so I, I still think I want more of a pattern there. I can do it manually by just simply going and grabbing my standard brush. Z add is on. And let's go ahead and take this all the way back down to its regular. And just hit Alt, click, and just drag it through. Let's change this again to a freehand. I can do it that way. I can also switch to my clay brush which is what I prefer to use and just, I'd rather use a clay than a standard. It's just a habit, um, no particular reason other than the results. Smooth it out some. Let's go on the inside, do the same. So you can use the alphas or you can go and do it manually. All right, I'm going to turn my smooth intensity back up. There we go. I think I'm going to like that. I like that uh, approach in this case a little bit better. Now, once we get here, we're at 562. Let's go ahead and wipe that mask off. And let's say that I want to, you know, 562 is okay, but I'm going to use the Z remesher to give me a um, better topology for later on. So um, let's go to geometry and I'm going to click, turn it up to 100 and click my Z remesher. And as it operates, it's going to give me better topology and it's going to probably bring this. And so we were able to get it from here, 562,000 points to here, 20 points. And now we're working with a much smaller object. You know, maybe you don't want it to go down that low. That's fine um, when you're working. So let's go ahead and turn on. I'm going to turn the lines back on here. And let's turn the waist back on. I can go in and add the same type of detail to the corners here. Um, 
grab my clay brush and hold alt and just click the object I want to work on there we go and I can go from there once I have them there I can just smooth them out fairly quickly as a nice ridges I can reconstruct the topology if I need to if I feel it's too lumpy uh, but in this case I think it's fine there we go add one more here all right let's take a step back let's look at this and everything is okay here it's a good start now I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the curves that I created grab my move tool If you think about any Puma or Adidas old school breaking jacket. In our next lesson, we'll cover creating pockets for our jacket.